Now, when I was in the army in 1979, um, we'd all go down to the range. Uh, I'd be, I'd be like 17, 18, something like that. Go down to the rifle range, and uh, the corporal would come along and he'd say, "Right, everybody, and he'd pull his hat off, pull someone's hat off." You know the stupid little black beret that they used to wear. And they say, "Right, everyone, put a pound, pound coin, okay, in the beret." And we'd think, why? Because in those days you got paid forty pounds a week. That was the army's um, recruitment campaign. Forty pounds a week, a lad like you. Ah! That was the TV promotion, and uh, I fell for it, and I, I joined the army anyway. So a pound, a pound is a lot more in those days than it is now. So. We all had to put a pound in the beret, and there's 30 of us in the in the in the uh, the training unit. Don't forget, this is basic training. So there's 30 of us there, and we're on a 25 yard range. Well, they called it Mises Mises because we've got the metric system, haven't we? We had the metric, but I think the yeah, it was Mises, not yards. 25, it's pretty much the same distance. I think there's that much difference between a meter and a yard. Anyway. It adds up <laughs> over a thousand yards. Anyway, everyone's like, "Oh, all right." So, he puts a pound in the beret. So the guy's got thirty pounds in the beret. And don't forget, week's wages was uh, forty pounds. And they said whoever gets the highest score on the range wins the money. And I thought, yeah, that sounds good, that sounds good. How the fuck can you miss <laughs> with, with a dirty great long rifle barrel? These things, you can't miss the bullseye with this gun at 25 metres. You can't. It's just impossible. Unless you've got your eyes closed. <laughs> so, we all took turns. And unfortunately for me, because I was one of the best shots well, I was the best shot. Um, I only got one go. So I fired six rounds. And uh, all my six were in the bullseye. And they went, well, you can fuck off. That's you finished for the day. And everyone else is missing the target. How could you miss the bullseye? But how can you miss the whole fucking target? Right, honestly, they were fucking rubbish. And I just put it down to the fact that I wasn't good. I reckon I was as, I was average. I was as good as the, the next soldier, apart from the drivers in the Royal Corps of Transport who were fucking rubbish, right? Anyway, they did the whole day shooting and they said, Esk, get over here, left right, left right, left right, left right. You've won the £30, bump. I thought, oh, there's a result. So I've got £30 coins. I'm thinking, yes, get in, ka-ching. Nearly a week's wages. So, a week later, we're on the range. Corporal comes round. He's got the beret. Everybody, pound in the beret. And they went, oh, fucking hell. So we all put a pound in the fucking beret. And uh, there's another £30 in the beret. And they're all looking at me thinking, hmm, he won it last time. Who's going to win it this time? And I'm looking at all these bankers and I thought, well, none of you can fucking shoot. <laughs> Who do you think won it? Me. And I'm like that. Ka-ching! Get in! Thank you. Because I wasn't a very um, modest, loser, uh, modest winner. You know, I should have been like, oh, thanks, chaps. But I was like, ha-ha! Because I was only 17, 18, I can't remember. Anyway, so there's my second 30 quid win. And then the third week when we rocked up on the range, he comes out with his ass. Everyone pounding the belly, and they went fuck off. No, 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 not if Esketh's in the fucking competition. I don't want to put it in if he's not in it. And I still fucking won, but I couldn't have the money because I agreed. I said, "Oh fuck him, I'm not bothered." And uh, I. I can't remember who fucking won, but he, he got about two fucking bullets in the bullseye. And uh, I had six. Consecutive. How can you miss? You just can't miss. The 7.62 assault rifle at 25 metres. How can you possibly miss the target? 
You can't. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Welcome to my channel. My name's Graham Hesketh, and I'll tell you a little bit about me. Okay, I am a pilot. That's one of my uh, claims to fame in life. Um, I wouldn't say I was the best pilot in the world. Certainly, certainly not. But I'm, I'm as good as the rest, for sure. Um, started out life in Liverpool in uh, 1961, and uh, grew up in Liverpool. Uh, joined the army in '79. I hated the army. Didn't like the army. I was uh, into firearms, though. I did enjoy firearms aspects of it. Four wheel drive. Um, learned to drive in the army. I was a truck driver. That's what I did in the army. I was in the World Coach Transport, and. Um, as I mentioned in an earlier video, you know, that's where I got into machine guns, especially the, the Bren gun, that was my personal weapon, it was known as the LMG in those days. And it was a really good gun, and I was really, really interested in firearms, and uh, much to my horror, I discovered that that wasn't a good thing in the army. They actually accused me of having an unhealthy interest in firearms. I thought, well, if you've got an interest in firearms, surely the best place to be is is in the military. No, no. You know, as much as I wanted to do things, and I was just getting poo pooed everywhere, all angles. Like, no. Every time I tried to get ahead of the game, I just met with a brick wall all the time. No good. No good. I was on the shooting team because I was the only one in the unit who actually had cross rifles on the sleeve I mentioned this earlier and all that meant was you can hit the target 47 times out of 50 I think it was on the annual personal weapons test and you're only shooting with iron sights up to 300 yards and you can't miss <laughs> okay <laughs> at 300 yards you cannot miss the target so it was pretty piss poor, I thought, the army. The regiment, the unit that I was in, it, was, uh, it sucked. Didn't like it at all. And I, I very soon got out of the army. I did actually work my ticket, as they call it. I was supposed to be in for three years. And I did two years, 265 days, something like that, in the army. And in that time, it didn't stop raining the whole time. And I think I drove through every bog in England in a truck being soaked and cold and it was just thoroughly miserable. I didn't enjoy being in the military. I, I'm not really a military person, you know, I don't get on with the military at all. I, I'm a hippie with the machine gun, okay? And uh, that's what my, my sergeant said to me. Because when I initially joined the army, I joined the Royal Military Police and I didn't like that one bit. I thought, no, this isn't for me. So I transferred to... Uh, the World Corps Transport, and I didn't get on there either, I just didn't like it. Yes. Anyway, enjoyed it, got into the fire, got the firearms licence, started shooting at the, the shooting club, that's where I really, really excelled, because apart from aeroplanes, firearms and my other um, main interest at the time, and I got right into it, got into everything, fired every, every gun in the club, evaluated every gun in the club, uh, even worked at the club, you know, doing reloads, reloading, because a lot of the uh, ammunition that you shoot at these gun clubs are reloads. You get all the empty cases and they just put new primer in them, put more powder in, put the head on them and put them in a box and they, they, they go for like a fiver for 50 rounds, what well, they did in the 1980s, not what they are now. But if you bought factory reload, 357 or 9mm Parabellum, you're looking at like a lot more money, 20 quid, say 15, 20 quid. So compared to the fiver for the reloads, I was there reloading all mine up. Because only shooting paper targets for 50 yards. And um, it was there that I got my first AK-47, okay? Because you could have them in the British uh, Isles at that time, so long as they were semi-automatic. You couldn't have a machine gun. Uh, a submachine gun was a Section 5 prohibited firearm and 
I bought this. These were imported, 100% legal. You had to have a firearm. It was called a Section 1 firearms license. That's what I had. And you could, you could name on team guns uh, and uh, so much. You could only have so much ammunition. It was all really carefully controlled. You had to have a safe in the house. You had to have a, a separate ammunition safe. So usually it was one big safe with a separate door at one end. And uh, you couldn't keep the gun and the ammunition in the same box. You know, the, the ammunition had to be in a separate box. It had to be bolted to the floor. And the police would come round every now and then and check your serial numbers. And uh, you hadn't got too much ammo. I think you were allowed 500 rounds of ammunition. And uh, it, everything went great. I used to go, I used to really love the gun club. I'd be going there. I, I went to several different gun clubs, went in several different competitions and pretty much um, not being big headed but I wiped the floor with most of the people there you know as far as target shooting was concerned there were a few good people in there as well who were, were very good but um, most of them most of them were, were just rubbish they just went down for fun to have a plink and that was great and I really enjoyed it got my first AK-47 and uh, suddenly realised, having come out of the British military, this was an AKM-47 from uh, Hungary, brand spanking new, with a folding understock, 762 um, times 39 it came with two or three magazines, and, uh, and a bayonet. I've still got an AK-47 bayonet, not, not that one, but exactly the same. And I thought to myself, I evaluated this weapon and I thought to myself, this is actually better than the, uh, the FN SLR, without a doubt. You can still hit things at 300 yards away. I mean, it, the barrel was shorter, so it wouldn't have been as accurate over a longer distance. But the, for, for my liking, the, the, the SLR had an enormous barrel on it. And it was very accurate, it was a really good gun, but I thought the barrel was too long for most applications that I wanted to use it for. I, I, I switched to the LMG because I felt it was a better weapon. And if we ever had to go to war, I felt I'd have stood a better chance with the LMG than I would with, um, with the SLR, and that's the way I did it. But I suddenly realised that this AK-47 was better than the FN, in my opinion. Now, I've never actually gone to the range with an FN and um, the AK and done the same shoot with both to evaluate them. But I wish I could have done, but unfortunately, um, circumstances changed in the UK. And the, um, the AK-47 and all other semi-automatics got banned because this loon called Michael Ryan went running around in Hungerford and... Uh, it, he had a gun licence as well, unfortunately. And he went running around the shopping mall with his AK-47, just wasting people. And there was a huge public outcry, as you can imagine, you know, quite rightly, really. And uh, how come private people have got guns like this that belong in, 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 in the Middle East, you know, with, with war zones and things? And that was it. All gone. That's a hand of men. And uh, that was the end of that, and I was really devastated. I, I was I was so mortified because I just discovered assault rifles. Okay, they were really good, fully automatic assault rifles. And then there was the interest changed into submachine guns, which is pistol ammunition, not rifle ammunition. And uh, there's always been a strive for like a universal gun. You know, the army. It's got a little gun, medium-sized gun, bigger gun, huge gun. They just wanted one gun to give to everybody, the universal gun, which would be the, the gun of choice. And I think that's pretty much what they've got now. The, um, I've never fired the, the SA-80. I believe the first one had quite a few problems. But the second one that came out, the, um, the SA-80 Mark II, that was, um, I've been told by people who have fired it, that it's... it's Pretty good weapon, although I'll, I'll reserve judgment on that because I've never fired it. I can see the advantage of the, the bullpup design. It's because you've got your, your pistol grip in the middle, so you've got your balances in the middle. You've still got the full rifle barrel length, and uh, 
you, you, your magazines at the back and working parts at the back, so you, you've got a shorter gun, but you're still retaining the same barrel length. And they're, they're, I think they're using 5.56 NATO at the moment, which is pretty good round. I mean, I've heard people complain out in Afghanistan that they've been out shot with 7.62 or 3.03 even, and they had a, a big issue over that, and they wanted to get a, a higher calibre weapon back out there. And uh, I, I understand that the, the British military have got 7.62 again. Now, well, they, they, they've pulled out of Afghanistan now, we're not there anymore. But you know, from a military application, you do need something like that if, if the enemy's outranging you and uh, with power and stuff. You, you do, you definitely need something that you can at least just not get picked off with a, a great range and have no ability to fight back. Makes a big, big difference. Needless to say, we went on, but it's only a 10 week, basic training was 10 weeks to teach you how to polish your boots, wear your uniform, iron it, wash it, teach you how to march and how to shoot the gun. I mean, that's about it. That's about all you can do in 10 weeks and wear a gas mask and an NBC suit. It's all basic stuff, you know, crammed in. And it was like 10 weeks and you were dead proud, dead proud when you finished. Passed out, yes, I'm a trained soldier, yes. Keen and ready to fucking go and take on the world at 18, you know. How sad is that? I don't think your brain's properly developed. You know, your logic. <laughs> You're 17. Because these fuckers could give you a gun at 17 and say, right, over the top, kill every all the enemy. And you'd just be off, wouldn't you? You'd be like, bang, 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 fucking... That's why they only employ children in the army. Okay, you look at the Falklands War, you look at... Remember the song, no, 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 19, 19. The average age of the combat soldier in the Second World War was 21. In Vietnam, he was 19. No, 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 19. You can look it up if you're interested. But it's true, it's true. That's the age of the combat soldier. Because once you've reached the age of mid-20s, you're going to go, you want me to do what? <laughs> Anyway, you're still at school, you've still got your school head on, haven't you, 18, and you... They said to me, right, we're going on the range, we're going to fire from 300 metres, we're going to go down to 200 metres, we're going to go down to 100 metres, and whoever gets the highest score is going to get the gold trophy. And I thought, oh, it's mine already, I've got it, I've got it, I don't care, I'm looking at all these wankers, and I thought, none of these fuckers can shoot. I mean, maybe it was just because I was in a, in a, in a group of people who just couldn't shoot. Because I actually learned to shoot with an air rifle. I had a BSA 0.177 cadet, which is 0.45 millimetre, right? And it was a springer, you know, you, you sort of pulled the barrel down and put a pellet in it. Clonk. You'd be there shooting. Got up to all kinds of skullduggery with that. I'm not... But that's how I learned to shoot. The same sort of gun you'd find at the fairground, you know, you'd be shooting something two foot away. Do you think... Are you serious? You want me to shoot things that are two foot away? I'm going to tell you there. Anyway, I took mine up on the hills because we were lucky enough to live up in the, in the moorland, you know, way up above the hill, Pennines above Manchester. And we were up there shooting away. And I, I was... I was, I was Pretty good. I could I could hit what I fired at. You know, with the limitation of the gun. Obviously, the gun only shoots so far, and the air gun, and then the pellet starts to drop, doesn't it? But you know, I could I could hit what I shot at within reason, in range. And so, when they give you a seven point six two assault rifle after many years shooting air rifles, you think, well, this is exactly the same. It's got a bit of a kick, not really. You know, I never noticed the kick. Really, you know, and there was holes in the target exactly where I put them, and you think, well, what's hard about that? So here we are on the on the um, the final test before we passed out, and um, I just wiped the floor with them all, and, and I just got the gold trophy, and that was that. I think the person who came second didn't even didn't even get close. 
And uh, when it comes to the end, the final passing out parade, I was the only one with the cross rifles on, on my arm for um, marksmen. But when it came to the uh, the overall best shot over the ten weeks, I didn't get that. I didn't get the best shot. Someone else got it. And I thought they'd cheated actually at the time. I thought, oh, how the fuck can he fucking... Because I fucking beat him hands down every time. And they said, no, 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 he was better than you at the early stages. And I said, well, I was fucking shit up. Like right from the beginning. Yeah, I'm not having it. But that was how it was. Driver Dag got the fucking best shot, and I didn't. And then Taffy Fry got the best recruit, and I got the cross rifles. So that was how it finished up, and we all passed out, and we all became trained soldiers. How scary was that? Okay, now, the army shooting team, right? I was blagged. I was blagged tremendously, and they had me right over. Okay, but then I had them over. I had them over. This is while I was still in the 27 regiments. Okay, we had a, we had a, a sergeant major called Ron Hughes. He was actually all right. I liked him a lot. He was a good lad. And he wasn't like a... He did scream and shout. All, all sergeant majors <laughs> scream and shout. But he was a company sergeant major. And uh, if you wanted anything, you had to go and see him. And he'd go and clear it with the boss. He was a right wanker. He was called um, Major. Was he Major? Or a Captain, I can't remember. He was one of the two. Called Cox. And he was like a little old lady. Little fat, stocky. Short hair, but he looked like he was wearing makeup and, and lipstick and rouge. And he'd be like, Ew, what's this, Carpro? What do you do? And he was like, Ew, like a proper little fucking withered wretch. Anyway, I went down to the um, to Brighton because my mum lived in Brighton, and I went to this gun shop on East Street. There was a nice gun shop on East Street, and I was just walking past, and I thought, oh, they got guns in the window, you know, because it's one of those things, you know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a shopper when it comes to guns, so I goes in, the, I goes in the uh, in the shop, and I'm looking around the shop, and I said, well, I'm just interested, mate. I, I haven't got a firearms license. I said, I'm, I'm just interested in, in looking, see what you've got. And uh, I said, I'm in the army. And he went, oh, you can get a firearms license dead easy if you're in the army. Oh, really? Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking around like this and I clocked this 303, the Enfield on the wall. And it was, uh, it was an SMLE from the First World War, which is, I mean, they're all basically the same. The ends are different, you know, the bayonet's different or something. But this was an SMLE 303 Lee Enfield rifle. And I said, how much is that? And he went, 50 quid. I thought, you serious? 50 quid? I said, how easy is it to get a firearms licence? He goes, well, if you're in the army, he goes, it's a doddle. He said, you just get the firearms licence application form from the police station. Right, you get your company uh, commander to sign it, and uh, that's it. You keep the gun in the armory, the army's got armories, you can put them in there, and you're laughing, you can go and shoot it any time you want, you know, whenever. I thought, 50 quid. I thought, I'm having that. I said, can I have a look at it? I got it down, and it was like... It was just a dead standard. I mean, there was nothing special about it, it was just a bog standard. 303 the Enfield SMLE from the First World War, which was what my granddad used, obviously, when he went, he was in the Lancaster Fusiliers, he was in the Bantams, and he went off to the Somme, he got captured on the Somme, and I thought, wow, this is dead cool, and I thought, because I was into shooting, and I was in the, in the shooting team, because they, they noticed that the cross rifles, you know, so they, they put me on the shooting team, anyway, I thought, yes, oh yes, I said, I'll come back for that. And I think I gave him a couple of quid deposit and I said that uh, hang on to it for me, I'll let you know in a few weeks' time if, if it gets good. He goes, no, no problem, I'll keep it for you, it's fine. I said, well, if I don't come back, you can keep the couple of quid. I think I might have given him a fiver deposit, non-refundable. And uh, I was dead excited, I thought, get a 303, get a 303. And uh, I went to see Ron Hughes and I said to him, 
I've seen this uh, 303 rifle I want to buy. I said, I need a firearms license. He said, uh, and he said to me, just could get your CO to sign it and everything will be fine. And he goes, yeah, okay, put it on CO's orders. Blah, 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 blah. Put it down, I'll see you on Monday. So I went down to the police station, got the form, filled the form in. I went to one user, said, have I filled the form in? Right, he's looking at the form. Yeah, 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 that's all fine. So all I need is in this con to sign it. And we're in business. Yes. Anyway, I'm standing outside his office and he's a popper out of a little fucking worm, this cunt. And he comes mincing in. The Zambag. I can't, I don't know what it was with army officers in the RCT. They all looked like reptiles. They didn't look human, you know, there was something weird about them. Anyway, my turns are going because people are going in, coming in and out, all different things. My turn. Right, let's go! Left right, left right, left right! Right, hold! Right turn! And he's standing there in front of his desk and he's, he's there looking down at this application form and he goes, What's this? I thought, well, here we go. So it's an application form, sir, for a firearms license. A firearms license? Yeah, that's correct, sir. He goes, what on earth do you want a firearms license for? I said, well, I've seen this gun that I want, and uh, I'd like to um, to shoot it. Because I'm interested in guns, I'm into guns. And this is classed as an unhealthy interest in firearms, by the way. For future reference. And he goes, well, what sort of gun are you going to... What sort of gun do you intend to buy? I said it's a 303, the Enfield SMLE. A 303? And where on earth are you going to shoot it? I said, well, I would like to shoot it on the army range, sir. Uh, on, uh, with, with permission, of course. Uh, at an appropriate time. On the army range? I mean, he was like that, honestly. I'm not exaggerating, he was like that. And he said, where, where on earth are you going to keep it? I said, I'd like to keep it in the in the um, squadron armoury, if that's okay with you, sir. In the armoury? Oh. And I knew for a fact there were other people in the regiment that had firearms. I'd seen an AK-47, for example, with, with the folding bayonets, and it was in the armoury. Because the armour had pulled it out and went, ooh, look at that, that's fucking cool, isn't it? So I knew for a fact that there were firearms licence holders in the regiment, and that's precisely where they kept them. And it's probably the safest fucking place as well. Anyway, he went, I can't possibly approve this. Certainly not for anything as powerful as a 303. March out! Oh, rejected! Ah! Right, turn left, right, left, right, left, right. And you, you, you're you gone. You haven't even got a moment to fucking argue your case. And Ron Hughes is standing outside. He's got his head next to me like that. And he goes, oh, I'm really sorry about that, Graham. I said, well, fuck him. I said, that, my personal weapon is a fucking Bren gun. Right? And we go on the shooting team. We shoot in the, the, the 7.62 SLR. And he won't let me have a 303 because he thinks it's too fucking powerful. What's going down here? I said, you can count me out the fucking shooting team. I'm not going on the shooting team anymore. He goes, oh, don't be like that. Don't be like that. I said, well, I am fucking like that. He wants to be a cunt. I'll be a fucking cunt with him. So that was it. <laughs> Gone. You know, it's one of them, isn't it? And uh, I have to give up my weekends because the army works from Monday to Friday and then they don't work at weekends. They have a weekend off. Unless you're on guard. Like, well, there's extracurricular activities or an exercise, something like that. Anyway, next next shooting team comes up. I said, forget it, man, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. He goes, oh, come on, come on, it's for the squadron. I said, the squadron, you mean his fucking squadron? Cox's fucking squadron, that fucking wank pot. I think guns are too fucking dangerous. I don't want to touch them. And he's like, oh, come on, come on, you've you got to go. It's a fucking order, you're going. And I said, right, am I, am I? So there I was Saturday morning, been to the arm and he got the fucking gun. Right, and we're there and the fucking boss goes down the fucking ranges and we're all there. Into, into regimental fucking shooting competition with 
don't know, the Paras and the, and the fucking Welshies and the, and the Remy. And uh, we're there, and it's my turn. It's my turn. We've got five rounds each. Okay. And uh, I can't remember. Let's just say it's 100 yards. So he exposes it 100 yards or whatever. So I just, I'm number, it was, it was four of us. And I was number three, I believe. And I just got a bit on there, otherwise it'll go off. Yeah, I was number three, and uh, so when the whistle blew and the targets popped up, I shot number one first, and then I shot number two, and then I shot number four. And then I went back and shot number one, and number two, and number four, because I was number three. So at the end of the, um, the five rounds, they did get the score, and uh, the score came through. Well, he he'd, he'd scored seven out of fucking five. Number two had scored seven out of five, and he'd scored six out of five. So there was a, there was a tie between the first two, and I wash out, not a single fucking hit, and I went, oh fucking dear, I must have missed, and he went, fuck off, go and fuck off, and I did, and I never fired for the shooting team ever again. Wankers.